Hello, and welcome to my presentation on the Neural Developmental Framework. This is a better way to understand students based on a book study of Schools for All Kinds of Minds by Mary Dean Berenger, Craig Pullman, and Michelle Robinson. Any quotes are taken directly from the book. What I'm going to do is introduce the ND constructs, uh, talk a little bit about each one. I'll show how um, it could look to teachers and then what it might actually be in reality. I'll talk about what I thought about before regarding each construct and what I've learned since. So let's get started. The neurodevelopmental constructs are systems that are informed by brain science. They help us understand the science behind how people learn. They're a joint effort by the scientific and educational communities, and they help us understand students' brains and how best to teach them. The first system is attention. This is a system we're very familiar with as teachers. It's uh, defined as the ability to work consistently, focus on the right details when reading and listening to the teacher, and thinking ahead about what to say or do. So, uh, and neurodevelopmental uh, weakness in attention could look like this to a teacher. He's just lazy. He's perfectly capable of getting the work done, but he just chooses not to. When in reality, this student has a neurodevelopmental weakness in attention, mental energy controls. He has an incredibly difficult time concentrating and struggles to maintain the mental energy necessary to start, sustain, and finish writing tasks. Before I read this book, I thought that uh, attention issues were primarily related to not being able to attend to a speaker or a task. But now I know that ND weaknesses in attention actually manifest in a wide array, array of ways. In fact, a student that struggles with an ND attention weakness could actually be paying very close attention just to the wrong things for the task at hand. For example, social dynamics instead of focusing on the assignment. Let's move on to the second system, which is called spatial ordering. This is the ability to perceive how visual stimuli are oriented and organized in space. So this could look like a teacher thinking, I don't know what happened. She's performed so well in math this year, but as soon as we started our geometry unit, her performance tanked. It's like she thinks learning about shapes isn't real math, so she doesn't care about it like she normally does with numbers and symbols. When in reality, this student has a neurodevelopmental weakness in spatial perception. Solving algebraic equations is no big deal because her number sense is strong, but her mind doesn't process lines or shapes in space the same way it processes numbers and processes in math. She's likely frustrated because math typically comes easily to her, but she's disoriented by not understanding geometry, not understanding why she doesn't understand, and not being able to rely on the ways she normally and successfully learns math. Shout out to myself in 10th grade. So I used to think um, that spatial ordering was an all or nothing skill set. Either students understand shapes, placement, and space, or they don't. But now I know that students can be strong in one spatial function, say spatial perception for shapes and patterns, but have a weakness in another function, such as materials management, which makes it hard for the same student that excels in understanding space on paper to maintain a neat and orderly desk, locker, or backpack. The next system is called temporal sequential ordering. This is the ability to understand the importance that serial order plays in remembering, creating, and interpreting a sequence of data or information. This can masquerade like this. She is so clueless. We've had the same schedule since the beginning of the year. How is she still not getting to class on time? When in reality, this student has a neurodevelopmental weakness in sequential memory. She has a very difficult time keeping track of her daily schedule, so she struggles to remember the order of her classes. The off days with schedule modifications, for example, chapel days, shortened weeks, shorter classes due to special events, throw her off even more and reinforce her difficulty maintaining the order of events in her mind. Before, I thought that temporal sequential ordering only showed up in things like specific processes, like solving an algebraic equation. But now I know that neural developmental weaknesses in temporal, temporal spatial ordering can interrupt both the academic or cognitive portions of a student's day, as well as the chronological events and processes embedded in the schedule of school days, weeks, and months.